This one's for Devontae Adams. Welcome to the Raiders Report. Mitch, what you got for us? Shout out to Chuck and Jimmy and all the supporters over there on Locals. And remember, if you guys want to be featured on upcoming shows, become a local supporter. How do you do that? Go to RaidersReport.Locals.com. I also got to say, Jimmy, I love the email. How many takes did it take you to get that one right? So what's going to be coming up here on today's show? We're going to be getting into the latest news and rumors around the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to talk about a player that the Raiders signed. We're going to be breaking down Derek Carr contract extension. I think it's about to happen sooner rather than later. We're going to talk about Stephon Gilmore, some people to target at right tackle, a trade that went down today, and Marcus Mariota heading off to another team. The breaking news that we have is that the Las Vegas Raiders are signing linebacker Micah Kaiser. Now, today, Kaiser visited Las Vegas. He had something going on. I mean, I didn't know if this deal was going to end up happening or not. The contract details are still TBA, but he's played in 36 games. He has 11 starts, and he's been with the Los Angeles Rams. He spent some time with the Denver Broncos, and last season spent time with both the Rams and the Broncos. However, all the numbers and all the stats that you're about to see are only from the Broncos. He had 19 tackles, a tackle for loss, zero sacks. In 2020, he had 77 tackles, 13 pass breakups, one forced fumble. 2019 didn't play, had a pec injury, and then 2018 only four tackles. When I think about Kaiser, I know a lot of people were saying, okay, now the Raiders have another linebacker. What exactly does that mean going forward in terms of could they still go out and sign a Kyle Van Noy? Could they go out and sign another linebacker? I'll give you my opinion on what I think about this move, but you guys can go down now in the comments section and let me know. What is your one-word reaction to Micah, Micah Kaiser signing with the Raiders? Go ahead and let me know. My one word is health because he hasn't really been able to show over the past few seasons that he could stay healthy. When he is a healthy player, he could be reliable depth. I don't want to see him in the starting lineup on defense. Realistically, you're hoping that he can contribute on special teams. That's going to be his best availability for Las Vegas. And you know Josh McDaniel, Zagler, all those guys coming over from New England. That's what they like. They like players who can also give some special teams reliability. So that's personally what I think about Kaiser. As always, y'all, I tell you, news, rumors, we got you covered here on the Raiders Report. I try to whip up this video ASAP Rocky. So if you're just looking for videos every single day, 100% free, click the subscribe button, turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a thing. The latest rumors going on around the Raiders is from quarterback Derek Carr. We know there's a lot of rumblings around a potential extension, and I saw this tweet out there, figured I'd go ahead and break it all down. Since some of y'all are sensitive, I will remind you that I only want people who encourage, speak life into me, and uplift me to have a voice in my life. So if you're blocked, you're probably acting like a clown for clout. I still love y'all but I don't have time for your negativity. If you're not blocked by Derek Carr, type not blocked. If you are blocked by DC, go ahead and type blocked. Personally, when I saw this tweet, I can understand DC maybe wanted to rip on a few people. Heck, maybe even me for giving them a little bit of a tough time over the past few months, but I've always cared about Raider Nation. That's why I wear this t-shirt. But I also thought this. Does this mean that DC is about to get a contract extension? I'm going to go ahead and say that it's four no Chucky heads. Believe it, baby. We've known for a while that it was probably going to end up happening. Now that the Devontae Adams trade ended up going down, now that him, that Adams and Carr get to play football together, which they haven't done since their time back at Fresno State, he's got one year left on that contract. Josh McDaniel said a few weeks ago that Eric Carr will absolutely be the week one starting quarterback. I've sat up here on this show and I've said, well, it depends on what exactly the Raiders decide to do. Now the fact that you're able to go out and get Devontae Adams for the next five years, I'm okay with them committing a few extra years to Derek Carr. So what do y'all think here? Is Carr about to get his extension? I'm going to go ahead and type my wife for yes. I believe it's going to happen. I always thought it was going to happen. I put out contract projections, you know, weeks ago and people were like oh I thought you didn't want it to happen 
I just didn't know if it was going to happen. So why for yes, and for no, is Carr about to get his extension? My contract extension that I put out, uh, I'm going to say now almost six weeks, maybe two months ago, was I saw Carr getting a two-year contract extension worth $74 million. So that is an average of $37 million a year. And I saw guaranteed money of 74. I think they're going to give it to him fully guaranteed, even upload a little bit at signing bonus. So that means his new contract would be three years because, remember, He's got one year left at 19.9. So three years at 93.9, the average is 31.3, guaranteed 74 million. The reason why that this is still probably a little bit lower is because Derek Carr has flat out said, I would be willing to take less money for Devontae Adams. Well, now we got Devontae Adams. So I'm curious to see if DC is willing to take a little bit less money. And if he is, just even more respect. Since I have heard I am an idiot, since I have heard I have all these other adjectives in terms of a Derek Carr contract extension, Rick, I know you always watch the show. I appreciate it, but uh, stop being such a Twitter troll. Let me know down in the comments section your Derek Carr contract ideas because I'm going to be looking. Now, shout out to Chug and Jimmy69. Shout out to everyone who has already become a supporter over on Locals. If you're looking for an extra live show every week, if you want exclusive content, then please join over there. We're getting close to 600 members. It's RaidersReport.Locals.com. And to the first 100 annual supporters, we're also going to go ahead and send you guys a T-shirt. we got a few more to go. If you're wondering, all right, well, what kind of content do you provide? I ate the spiciest chip in the entire world. And that video is on and available to locals watchers. If you want to see the live video that I did, that's also available over there. I did an NFL Combine video. I've talked about videos in terms of who the Raiders should go out and target in free agency. Jeremy and I are going to do a Jello match on there, but that one might be on YouTube. I haven't decided yet. At the end of the day, it's this, man. We're trying to keep you guys up to date on everything going on around the silver and black. And if that means that you can get even more news and rumors on locals, then why not go ahead and become a supporter? RaidersReport.Locals.com. All right, now the next story that we're going to be getting into is another big-time rumor, another big-time free agent that I've been getting asked about a ton. Could the Raiders go out and get Stephon Gilmore? It's definitely a report. However, in terms of being interested, the Raiders are for no Chucky heads interested in Gilmore. I know Las Vegas is looking to upgrade at the cornerback market. Could this mean a Trayvon Mullen trade end up going down? Sure, it, it could end up happening. Now, I kind of wish that I would have changed the title to interest in Gilmore because the interest is for no Chucky heads. In terms of him going to the Raiders, that's still not 100% well known. I know Las Vegas has 17 million, about 17 million in salary cap space. That's per Spo track, per over the cap. We'll see how that ends up going down because there's still a few other details that are still TBA. Micah Kaiser is the perfect example of that. And if I was Gilmore, I would want probably about $14, $15 million. So here's your opportunity again. Let me know down in the comments. That's what Raider Nation, it's what the Raiders report's all about. Should the Raiders go out and sign Gilmore? I want you to type the S for sign, or I want you to go ahead and type P for pass. The reason why I'm going to say S for sign is for multiple reasons. One, the Raiders have done a good job. Ziegler has been putting his nuts on the table and saying, hey, I got balls and we're going to try to compete here in the AFC West. Gilmore has connections with McDaniels. He has connections with Simmons, who now is the Raiders defensive backs coach with Ash. On top of that, when I look at the AFC West, you have to compete. Then when you look at just the AFC North, that's a hell of a division. Now you go ahead and you look at the Colts. They just got better with a move that they made. The Buffalo Bills have Josh Allen. If you want a legitimate chance to win the AFC, you got to be great on every single level. And Stephon Gilmore gives you that number one corner. You throw him next to Rocky Sim. I'll say this, if they do end up making the move, you're probably going to be moving on from Trayvon Mullen. I respect Mullen. But if you can get Gilmore, you got to do everything in your power to do it. So should the Raiders go out and get Stephon? Yes, you absolutely should. But if that's the only move that you make, if the Raiders do not have enough money then to be able to go out and get a, a top right tackle, I'll say that that might be a bad idea. So yes, you need to get Gilmore, but you still need offensive line help. In terms of some other offensive linemen out there, and when I talk about offensive linemen, I believe that the Raiders need a right tackle more than any other position left. 
Yes, you can rely on Simpson to play left guard. You could also depend on Denzel Good being able to swing over there to left guard as well. Who knows? Maybe even Alex Leatherwood could do it. But right tackle, right tackle now is going to be an absolute disaster. Brandon Parker is a free agent. I've seen some reports come out that he could potentially come back. Until I see it from a notable, credible source, I'll pump the brakes. But the top free agent right tackles left out there, Bobby Turner, or yeah, Billy Turner, excuse me, is probably my number one. Riley Reef, Jermaine Ifedi. Ifedi is definitely a curious name to keep in mind because of the connections that Las Vegas has with Chicago. Brandon Shell, Bobby Massey. A name that y'all have heard me talk about a bunch here on the show is Cornelius Lucas. I like him a lot. Even David Questenberry. I know he gave up 11 sacks. Can be a little bit better, though, in the running game. Nate Solder has connections with both Patrick Graham. Both connections with McDaniel. And then the last name I'll bring up there is Mike Remmers. The other reason why you got to continue to build the offensive line, there can't be any more excuses. There can't be any excuses of why Derek was unable to do it. Because as far as I'm concerned, you went out and you traded for Devontae Adams. I don't care if the Raiders have a terrible offensive line. Nobody's going to want to hear it. And according to PFF last season, you had the 28th overall offensive line. And realistically... I don't know if it's better. In fact, it might be worse. I personally believe if we had a game tomorrow, hell, a game today, this would be the Raiders starting offensive line. Colt Miller at left tackle, John Simpson at left guard, Andre James at center, Alex Leatherwood at right guard, and then Denzel Good at right tackle. Do I have a lot of confidence in Simpson? No, not really. Do I have a lot of confidence in Denzel Good coming off an ACL surgery? No, I really don't. The Raiders need to go out and add a flipping right tackle. So give me your thoughts. Name a free agent right tackle the Raiders should go out and sign. In terms of overall value, Billy Turner's up there, Riley Reef. I, I fed he's the name, Cornelius Lucas. We need a right tackle. So please go ahead and let me know what you're thinking. Now, I've been really pleased by the effort that you guys have been putting forth in videos, and I am going to be giving away a signed Marcus Allen helmet. So if you guys want a signed Marcus Allen helmet, it's an official helmet, officially signed by the Raiders. Probably the best running back of all time, maybe minus Bo Jackson. Here's how you do it. All you gotta do is go ahead and give the Valley Brothers a follow on Facebook. Where at the link that you see below, it's also going to be in the comments and description of today's video, chatsports.com slash Valley Brothers. They also give away tons of other types of uh, NFL memorabilia. It's not just Raiders, but at the end of the day, my cousin Andrew, he appreciates all y'all. He's also a Packers fan, so we could kind of rub it in his face a little bit more. I'm talking about the Devonta Adams trade, nothing else. So go ahead, give them a follow on Facebook, Valley Brothers CNM. It's again, chatsports.com slash Valley Brothers. A deal that ended up going down a few hours ago at this point. The Atlanta Falcons, they traded the third overall, not third overall, third round pick, 82 overall, to the Indianapolis Colts for Matt Ryan. The reason why this impacts the Raiders is because I've said if there was going to be a team that makes a deal for D.C., it would have been Indianapolis. That's not going to happen now. They go out, they get Matt Ryan for, personally, I thought it, an absolute steal, which then also trickled down to me tweeting out, hey, I think Mariota ends up going to Atlanta. Then Mariota signs a two-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons. I don't blame Marcus whatsoever. I see some people on Twitter a little upset that Mariota's going to be leaving the Raiders. He's got an opportunity to start. I'm not saying that this means he's going to start because if I was the Falcons, I would still look into potentially drafting Malik Willis, another quarterback at number eight, but he is going to the Atlanta Falcons on a two-year deal. That wasn't the only thing that happened today around the NFL. Jameis Winston actually also went to, uh, he's re-signing with the New Orleans Saints on a two-year $28 million deal with $21 million guaranteed. Now, I know I talked about a lot, a lot of stuff today. Raiders, Derek Carr, free agency, trades. I promise y'all, I will keep you up to date on everything that's going on around the silver and black. So if you made it this far in the video, I would appreciate it. Drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys tomorrow when I go live, 6 p.m. Eastern time or 3 p.m. Pacific.